When most radiologists see an interleaving artifact, they think to themselves, uh, this is some sort of motion artifact, and go on. And it kind of is a motion artifact, but it's a different type, and it's worth learning more about the tick-tock, tick-tock appearance of the interleaving artifact. I want to show you a series of images from an actual patient scan in order as they appear on the packs, and I'm going to let you see what the progression looks like. What you saw there looked like the patient going up and down and up and down and up and down. <clears throat> Often it's the head turning side to side, side to side, side to side, which would, makes it look more like a tick-tock, tick-tock. And the question is, what kind of motion artifact makes perfect timing with the MRI scanner. How did the patient know to go between those exact two positions, back and forth and back and forth, with every single image acquired? To understand that interleaving artifact, we should first talk about the crosstalk artifact. Crosstalk artifact happens when two images are acquired either at the same time or one right after each other, and they are too close together or they cross one another. You can see this pretty frequently on MR images. For example, if you try to do all of your initial prescription images at the same time, the sagittal, coronal, and axial images will crosstalk with each other, creating dark bands. If you try to do your sagittal oblique or coronal oblique images of the TMJ, they'll be obliqued enough that they might run into each other a little bit, and you can see it on TMJ imaging. But perhaps the most common site at which we see a crosstalk artifact is in the lumbar spine. If you acquire two images of the lumbar spine angled to two different disc spaces, those angles may interfere with one another. And where those two lines meet, you will get signal dropout in both of the images. This is a crosstalk artifact. We have a real problem with crosstalk when we are looking at a stack of images, because every single one of these images is right next to two other images. So there's going to be a tremendous amount of crosstalk, and we won't be able to get any signal out of these images. How are we going to deal with that? We're going to do something called interleaving. When we interleave, we separate out all of the odd-numbered images and do that as one acquisition, and then go back and do all the even-numbered images as a separate acquisition. So during each acquisition, the images are not adjacent to one another and thus don't cause any crosstalk. Then, once we've done both of the acquisitions, we shuffle these back together into a more meaningful stack that is easy to look at on the packs. This works great as long as the patient doesn't move. Ah, as long as the patient doesn't move. What I'm going to do now is show you those same images that I showed you at the beginning of the lecture, but I'm going to show them to you, instead of in the order they were shown in the packs, in the order that they were acquired. Here's the first acquisition, all the odd-numbered images. Here's the second acquisition, all of the even-numbered images. You can see that on each of those acquisitions, there's no motion. The patient moved in between the two acquisitions. But once you shuffle them together to try to look at them in an anatomic order on the packs, it looks like the patient is going back and forth and back and forth. So in summary, crosstalk is an artifact that causes signal loss when two adjacent slices are excited simultaneously, or two intersecting slices. Interleaving is a way of avoiding crosstalk in a stack of images where you acquire all the odd-numbered images, then go back and acquire all the even-numbered images so that there are no adjacent slices being excited at the same time. 
Unfortunately, if a patient moves between the, those two interleaving acquisitions, it will look on the packs like they're going back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. This is the TikTok artifact, as I like to call it. Now, you can certainly interleave with more than two acquisitions. Sometimes we'll interleave three acquisitions, and then the patient looks like they're going bump, 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 and they're doing a waltz instead of a two-step. But the same basic principles apply.